welcome to my channel. My name is Marisa and um, I am a first time mama to this little baby in my belly. I'm a wife of 10 years and I have just started my career as a pediatric RN. So I do a lot of um, videos related to any of those three or lifestyle I wanted stuff. to share with y'all some of the stuff that I'm doing to prepare for labor um, and like a lot of like the natural things I'm doing to help like naturally induce my labor. So I am currently 37 weeks pregnant um, with this little boy in my belly. So hopefully any day now. Um, I'm outside with my dog so I apologize in advance if there's any interrupted barking. Um, the first thing I am doing to prepare for birth, which I've been doing for a good little while, is drinking red raspberry leaf tea. But I have been drinking a cup or two of red raspberry leaf. I was getting the um, medicinal, oh, I'll put a little picture up here. Uh, like it's an organic, it's just like the little tea bags, just pure red raspberry leaf. And so I started drinking that at 24 weeks and I would only drink one or two cups a day. Sometimes I would skip a day if I like didn't get around to it. Then starting at 34 weeks, I would, I've been drinking four to five cups every day. Um, when I got to about, I kind of ran out and I can't find the tea bags in any of my local stores. So there was about like a week or two, but like it might've been like 33 week, 33, 34, where I didn't drink anything. And, um, I was waiting to get like a shipment of like some bulk leaf, red raspberry leaf in. I will say this side note. Um, those two weeks that I wasn't drinking it daily, I was TMI constipated. The thing I noticed was that I was not pooping as much and it was just crappy. I was bloated. It didn't feel good, but at least for me, it's been helping me stay regulated. And I have a theory to that we'll talk about later. So I bought, I bought this off of um, iherb.com and um, it is organic red raspberry leaf. You can see it's just like the loose teas. I haven't opened this bag yet because I'm still about to finish um, the other one. I actually bought three of these and I've gone through them pretty quickly. I, I did a lot of research and it was basically like a teaspoon um, is supposed to be equivalent to um, like one cup, but that didn't feel like much. So I've actually been putting about um, six teaspoons in one of these, which I also got from iHerb. It's like a loose uh, tea bag. You can like put your like tea in, in it. And I boil water and I just like toss this in and then I'll put it in the fridge and I'll like down it at some point after it's cold because it's easier to drink when it's cold. Once I go into labor, I'm gonna make like a really big like concentrated like dose of this and I'm gonna add coconut water and I'm gonna add some a lot of honey to it and that's what I'm gonna sip on throughout um, my labor as it progresses so the second thing I have been doing to help my labor come along um, is I've been eating dates these are fresh medjool dates. Clover, get down. Um, I'll show you what they look like. I'll be honest. I'm going to film a whole video about dates because I think dates are fascinating when it comes to pregnancy and labor. Um, and there's a lot of really cool facts and a lot of people don't know about it. So y'all need to hop on the date train. This is what a date looks like. It's basically a giant raisin and it's, yes. it's okay. Some people like really like them. Weirdly, 
it's like the taste doesn't get to me so much, but the texture is ugh. So I started eating dates at 36 weeks. And um, the research says that you should eat about 30 to 60 grams of dates. So based on, there's two different kinds. So for the medjool dates, which are these, I think they're a little bit bigger than the other kind. Um, it's recommended that you eat three of these a day. I usually eat them at night, like kind of a little before I go to bed. And then if you get the um, Declit Nord dates, they're much smaller. Um, you should eat like five of those a day. Halfway through my 36 week mark, um, and I had like three dates and everything was dandy. And then the second day I ate my three dates and I was getting like cramps and I was like, oh, and it made me a little nervous because I was like, okay, I, I mean, I don't want to go into labor just yet. So I like waited a little bit and, um, <laughs> so I waited until I just like hit that 37 week mark just in case. Like, since I've been eating them for the last four days, I haven't, like, had, like, the very same, like, cramps, like, period cramps feeling that I had, um, the, like, first, like, the second day I started it, but, um, I have, like, had, like, I don't know how else to describe this, maybe this is Brockton Hicks, I don't know, because this is my first pregnancy, um, it's, like, really, sh you know how, like, when you are about to poop and you get, like, a really sharp, like, poo cramp it's like that and it's been on like my left side so it's either poop moving through me or it's my, like some type of contraction activity I don't know also fun fact um Mary Magdalene um was advised to eat dates at the end of her pregnancy so it's pretty it's a pretty historical thing you know it's been around for a while we just forgot about it my third Thing to prepare for um, labor and to naturally induce is I ordered some essential oils. I got clary sage um, and I'm probably butchering this, Lang Lang, Y-L-A-N-G, um, twice. <laughs> so Clary sage is actually something that you should avoid if you're into essential oils until you are in, like, within the realm of having your baby. Um, it is known to, like, start uterine contractions. Another cool thing about it is that it is known to help, like, with emotional blockages. Uh, I have seen, like, in some of the births that I've attended throughout the years, like, volunteering and being in school and such, I've noticed that there are points where the mom, like, it's like she's progressing, 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 and then it just, like, stops. And, um, it doesn't, like, go back or anything, but it's almost like she's reached that, like, mental block and she can't, like, over comment and or it's just like a little hump she has to get through and so it takes a little bit of time and then as soon as she's able to like get over that hump and it feels very emotional and mental I wouldn't say it was something like physical because the physical aspects have been happening but very very connected emotionally and mentally to what our like bodies are doing physically and how they're manifesting outward that's how what I believe and um I feel like that's kind of been a pattern I've noticed and I could definitely see myself having a moment like that um like everyone's everyone's insecurities you know we all are insecure for various reasons throughout our experiences in life and um that can sometimes hinder you or maybe you're trying to control something too much and you have to really learn to like let go and just let your body like take over and handle the birth as silly as it might sound, essential oils can really, like, kind of bring you to a place emotionally and spiritually. So, <laughs> we kind of dove into that hole. Um, I bought the little roll-ons. I'm still waiting for them to come in the mail. So, um, if they're here, by the time I'm editing this, I'll, like, put in a little clip of them. And um, 
I'm just gonna like wear them every day um starting like probably around like shoot next week 38 39 weeks the Lang Lang is known to just be something that's like really grounding and relaxing and floral scent but not like it wouldn't be like geranium or something that's like super super floral it's a little bit lighter uh, so I got that just like as something pleasant and I might wear it as like a perfume after I have the baby and everything. Number four, if I'm keeping count right. Um, I have been getting on my hands and knees. <laughs> Did a lot of research on this. Um, if you've heard of like spinning babies and all that, um, they talk about that, but a lot of midwives and other resources talk about the benefits of being in that position as well as like an inverted position because it helps your baby get into the best position for birth as well as it promotes excuse me them adding um pressure to your cervix so i've been doing hands and knees clean the baseboards in the house the other day um i oh speaking another good thing about hands and knees is that it pushes the baby's back i'll help help talk about this while i'm standing okay so Let's say the baby's head is right here. Here's his little head. And then his spine, his back would be like facing this way, my belly button. So a lot of times in pregnancy, babies will still be head down, but their back will be facing the opposite way up against your spine. So if this were my spine, and that's why a lot of women can have, um, maybe if you've experienced this or not, if you've had a baby, um, can have a lot, a lot of what they call like um, back labor, where you get really, really, really sharp, intense pain in your lower back. And that's because the hardest part of the baby's body is his head, uh, the back of his head and his back. And so that's pushing up against your spine and hitting all of those nerves and that's creating a lot of radiating pain in your lower back. And so sometimes you can reverse that even like on the onset of labor by basically promoting a motion of being like forward. A lot of times when you're pregnant and you, can, you, you, know, you can't blame yourself, you're tired and you're relaxed and you like sit down and you like lean back and that kind of promotes the baby's heavier part of their body, their back and their head, to float over and lean back against yours. So as much as you can, it's really, really good to get on your hands and knees um, every once in a while. Even if you're like leaning against a yoga ball, um, if you just get into like that like kind of simpler dog pose yoga position where you're like on your knees, but you're like down, laying down on your elbows and you're like, butts kind of poking up stuff like that so that really helps um get the baby into that position and that can help have a less painful labor as well so the baby's position is is a really big thing as far as like having a less traumatic um, birth experience and like having something go a lot smoother so doing that i've been doing a lot of squatting um the squatting position helps add pressure to your cervix. Um, also, <clears throat> helps add pressure to your cervix, keeps the baby's head down. I've been bouncing around on my yoga ball. Um, a lot of times if I'm just like sitting. Mm. Another thing like physical activity um, is walking. So walking is a big thing to help um, promote labor and keep your baby in a good position. Oh. Um, this can be number five. And this is kind of my theory. So there's not too much research behind it. Just my own observations with my body. Maybe it works for you. Maybe it doesn't. So I'm trying to consume a lot of fruits um, specifically for their fiber. Now hear me out. <clears throat> Before I had this baby, the last, like, I guess since I've ever had my period, um, I used to get such intense cramps. They were horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, I could not, like, 
I just, it was rough. <laughs> um, it wasn't until later on that I had started to kind of connect it to my diet. One time I ate, my dear friend made some like lovely lasagna type of meal and it was like packed with cheese. So, so much cheese. And sometimes that's how good they are. And you know what? Eat your cheese if you want to eat your cheese. But I knew I was about to start my period. Um, I was just kind of feeling crappy and I was like, yeah, I'm going to indulge in all this cheese. So I ate a crap ton of it. <laughs> the next day I started my period and I had the worst cramps I have ever, ever had. And I had, I was constipated. I had the hardest time pooping and I just knew like everything that I was, sorry, <laughs> this is TMI, everything that I was pooping out was like that cheesy lasagna meal and I just it was awful I don't know what it was so ever since then I was like <clears throat> when I get close to my period I'm not eating any I'm not eating a lot of dairy so I have a theory that your cramps or that my period cramps were related a lot to how my digestion was so when I would get close to my period, I would kind of focus more on like veggies and fruits and I would be constantly like pooping. I would stay flushed out, you know, because it's toxins in your body. If you have, if you have poop in you, that's, that doesn't feel good. It, you know, it might make you more fatigued. It might just make you feel kind of yucky or slow or even mentally because your body's focusing so much down there on you all the toxic poo trying to get it out of you instead of other things it could be working on. So I'm seeing if that'll translate. Again, this is my theory. Um, if that'll translate, I'm, I've literally ate like a whole giant watermelon the last two days. I got some melons, um, like cantaloupes that I'm about to cut up and I'm, I'm still eating a lot of meat because I know that's really important towards end of pregnancy getting my protein in. I am eating lots of lots of fruit. I'm drinking like smoothie drinks and stuff like that. My husband's theory is the green, the green smoothie theory. Thinks it'll help the baby slip right out. Um, so I've been drinking a lot of green smoothie, like mango smoothie, um, citrusy stuff. And I still, I haven't completely cut out cheese because I mean, let's be real, who can? Um, but I just do very, very, very small amounts. So like if we have a meal with cheese, I'll do like half or a third of what I normally do. And so my digestion has been really good. I have been, I also think since I was talking about the red raspberry leaf tea, that helps keep you like fluid because on top of like pushing that baby out and just having all that taken up space in your body, you don't want like added space in there. And I know a lot of women like if you ever if you've ever done a detox, um, you know how you feel like sick, like you just want to throw up or you want to poop and you just want to like and your body is just like ugh, getting all of that like kind of yucky stuff out of you not to say that getting a baby out is yucky but um it's almost like I kind of relate it to like your body is like going through a detox in a sense because something that's been in you for nine months it is now like pushing and getting out and so if you have like already a lot of like unhealthy stuff in you like old, old toxic poops that just have not made their way out um you know like just like eating unhealthy junk foods and stuff, it's gonna make that detoxing so much worse. Instead of like going through like being already kind of like cleared of those toxins and your body doesn't have to do that and on top of like birthing the baby. So that's just some stuff I've kind of been thinking about. That's kind of, that's everything that I'm doing. Um, if I think of anything else, I'll try to insert it into this video, but 
I hope this has helped you guys in some way. Um, if you have any other stuff that you think helped you progress your labor, any tips or something that I could try to, um, leave it in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Ka. Ka, the sparrow. He's becoming very well trained. <clears throat> He's used to his harness and his leash. Basically, he's a rescue squirrel that we had he's relaxing. found. Yeah. Oh, has he ever sniffed the lavender plant? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. He liked it. Oh my gosh, he, he really does. Ooh. Let's go in. It's too hot to be out. It's right really now. hot. Yeah, that's why I was kind of wrapping it up too, because I'm like. Well, it's just not the hour that squirrels are out and about. They're kind of hanging in the shady parts of the tree. And he was. He's not really feeling his leash today, so we don't want to make him do anything he doesn't want. And. You were able to clip his nails. Yeah. Nice. But. There's some off of yeah. Come on. I'm coming in.